o'clock. And yeah, we've pretty much blown the, uh, the vessel clean with the high pressure washer. I've been uh, dressed in the workman, first time in ages. Uh, quite a life for having to walk around dressed like this with a good safety shoes on. Baggies, it's too hot to work any other way. Now we've put uh, new anodes on, those props still fine. Basically been blown clean, there wasn't a lot of dirt on the boat. And yeah, we've replaced this prop completely. New anodes. It's amazing little pieces of engineering these twin pitch. Yeah, so a lot of big jobs done already. If it wasn't for the fact that she we're gonna anti file we could put her back in the water again. A lot of work in one day, and then we get back out there as soon as possible. Yeah, just busy dismantling a, a gory prop, uh, just taken off the blades. Unfortunately, discovered that the, that the uh, Teflon washer is correct. Actually, replacing these, these stopper blocks, uh, which are a bit damaged. But yeah, what a pity. The space is just as well. We took it apart. So we're going to replace these blocks, which are stopping blocks, these rubber blocks. They don't look too bad when you look at them with the eye, but if you go into the sunlight, you can see there's, a, there's damage there. They've actually cracked. So good thing we went to replace these because we found that the spacer washer is also cracked. So well, they're quite incredible little pieces of machinery, these. Amazing is you can just take that collar off and you can pull the whole back section of the prop off without taking the actual, actual sleeve which mounts onto your, onto your shaft. So, this collar just turns off and slides forward and then you can remove the whole prop and replace the back section. What he's done now is taken the blades off, just dry mounted them back again because uh, just to see how they go back because I haven't done it before. But yeah, it's pretty simple. Just keep your head. Mop. Keep the parts numbered in the right place. Yeah, the reason why we changed the, the back hub and put a new uh, prop on rather than uh, Servicing the other one is because um, yeah we've replaced the the blocks the stopping blocks but there's a a collar which goes in your nylon collar uh, or, a, or a spacer um, and uh, lo and behold there wasn't a single one available in the country so we've ordered three spares but yeah it uh, led to us just putting the new back end of the prop on uh, and re retaining the collar and the central sleeve which goes onto the onto the shaft. Yeah, luckily, very luckily that John uh, ordered uh, two new props. It's not something you would normally have to do, but he did anyhow. Because um, he wasn't sure what the condition was going to be like. Even though we dived, um, yeah, we saw the other one. This one was okay. But yeah, amazing. Uh, I don't know, has it a guess how many of these props are, are running in, in South Africa or on yachts? It's incredible that the agents wouldn't have a little part like that. It's, it's actually SNR. Anyway, it's, a, it's an incredible little piece of machinery, this. It's a twin pitch uh, prop. And when you go into forward, it folds as you change your, your, your drive, your centrifugal force. Actually, no, that's, that is your reverse position. Um, as, as the centrifugal force spins the prop, it, it, it closes and then opens in, in that position. This is actually a counter-rotating prop. And uh, uh, this, is, this is the... Uh, the port side which rotates anti-clockwise so you know it's opposite to the other side so it would open that would be your your drive forward and that would be your reverse because it's rotating that way that's why i got a bit confused so on the other side it works the other way now this is your rota it rotates clockwise yeah that would be your forward so it's rotating clockwise, it's going that way and then when you're going to reverse it would go that way and that would be your reverse. Amazing. And obviously as your pressure, as you're going forward sailing it would just fold up so you've got minimal resistance. Crazy design, works really well. I got the hole keyed mostly, we just got to sand the top sections now. Get rid of all the cracks from the, uh, the paint drying being out of the water for such a long time 
see this side has started to flat it. Got some serious cracking on the anti foul due to being exposed above water. So, yeah, fair bit of work to do. The dust this boat looks like absolute carnage on top. Terrible. But yeah, it's a process that we've got to finish. But it's getting there. Replaced both props now. So yeah, definitely good to go for a, for a while. Yeah, when well, it looks like this. <laughs> Running off the top deck, you know what it looks like on top. Yeah, see what a mess. Anyway. Maybe the last of the sanding today and then I'll start buffing the yacht today as well. We actually need to give it a wash down before they do that. So we'll just see. It's, uh, yeah. it's looking, looking very, very dirty at the moment. It's got this side to do and then uh, we'll start painting. Not looking pretty up here. Holy moly. A little bit of rain last night. It's actually just made it look even worse. Shocking. Now one of the drawbacks of being on the slip in this industrial area, the guys have been uh, grinding and disking this, this trawler. You don't want to see what this boat looked like this morning. This was absolutely orange. As I can show you, I don't know if you'll see it on there, you can see the staining. You can see it in the corners here. What a mess. Anyway, luckily the guys are here polishing on the outside. so. We're doing a couple of touch-ups for the damage from the previous trips. But yeah, we're going to have to polish the entire top deck to get rid of all the staining. So all the, the spatter and the filings that have drifted by wind, we've got quite a strong sun insta blowing, which is blowing it straight onto the boat. And we've just put a shade cloth up now to, to help prevent it going any further, but yeah, it's pretty much a fighting a losing battle entire side of the boat I and mean, you can see the difference between the edges which they've polished over there the yellow on the top deck and that's just from those filings that have just run now with the moisture so not pretty all boats are absolutely covered in you can see the it's almost like a tarnish that's in the boat really sad but anyway we're getting there we're getting most of the stuff done so we'll get her up to ship shape eventually yeah a bit of the chaos we have when uh, doing maintenance all sorts lying everywhere toolboxes <laughs> it's a means to get to the end yeah boat's looking terrible actually got a bit of a wash down this morning Oran busy sorting out the uh, rudder seals, We're just replacing the rudder locking uh, collar, uh, which one had seized. That was it. <laughs> Hard at work. How far you got the seal in? Okay. Yeah, and, and, the, and the new collar. Yeah, never stops on these boats. Absolutely never stops. Oh, that's turning nicely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now this is the fending collar. It's actually an aluminium collar with uh, stainless steel grub screws, but we had one of the shaft seals on the rudder leaked, so it got a bit of moisture on it. Basically locked solid. Couldn't get them out. We had to drill out the sun. This is actually the port side one which didn't leak, and it's still in pristine condition. But we've now changed them and had uh, stainless steel collars uh, turned, so that we won't have this problem again in the future. Yeah, and that's the old collar which uh, the uh, grub screw seized in place and that one as you can see absolutely corroded and managed to get one out only out of, out of the three and it was miraculous only the tip was was, was uh, corroded into place so yeah aluminium and stainless steel do not go well together at all especially if you add a bit of salt now a new collar, stainless steel, you know, with bolts, not grub screws. A lot easier to get out. Yeah, the original problem with the original collar was probably a lot to fault of our own because we 
we saw the, the leak on the last trip and, and didn't, uh, when we got back obviously we went straight into lockdown and all that nonsense and uh, we should then have uh, pulled the, the rudder, um, you know, rudder apart and taken the uh, the rudder arm off and, and removed the collar then because, you know, it, it would have come off I, I guess. But standing for a year and a half with the moisture and that um, was obviously the reason why it seized up so so uh, badly and probably no fault of the manufacturers from it's a bit of slackness on our part but also because of the COVID and not being able to get to the uh, to do maintenance and things like that so yeah a bit of both I guess but it's fixed now so all good so yeah the steering gear back and reattached here we go it's been great to have the Nexus Shots crew down here giving us a hand and sorting out a couple of the a couple of the things we had to have sorted. Warren's been great help and the guys polishing. Yeah, well, we're pretty much uh, done with all the maintenance we've had to do. Spent the whole morning uh, washing it down with oxalic acid and, and boat bright. Uh, boat had a lot of staining. It hasn't, hasn't been pleasant. We've got everything done and finished. We're just waiting for the, uh, for the weather tomorrow, which is uh, going to be a uh, quite a strong southwest, but the morning's light, so yeah, tomorrow morning we will go back down again and hopefully all will go well. And we've got some sea trials to do just with the uh, autopilot. We had a couple of problems with the autopilot, which has got to be, just got to be attended to. And then uh, from then on, uh, yeah, hopefully we might just do a little fishing trip, do some broad little deep dropping on the way home, but that all depends on the weather, so. Yeah, we shall see, weather dependent and hopefully we get her back, back to St. Francis and back in the port there and out of this uh, dirty environment as soon as possible. Anyway, uh, there hasn't been a lot of uh, maintenance that I've been able to show because it's, it's, uh, I've just been too busy. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, keep watching, hit the subscribe button. Hopefully we've got a couple of weeks and we're going to be on our way to do what we originally set out to do. Uh, we really, really can't wait. Cannot wait to get out in the ocean and start doing some fishing and sailing. Yeah, so join us next week as we take Lara Noah back home, back to a port in Port St. Francis. So that's about it. Until then, we'll catch you next time.